Hello, my soccer universe. Uh, might not look like it, but I'm feeling pretty sick. So, yeah. Uh, I did watch games yesterday, but in the morning I woke up and I just didn't feel alright. So I spent the whole day sleeping and now it's uh, late afternoon and I decided, okay, before I go to the doctor, I'm gonna talk about the games yesterday. Do the same thing tomorrow and even sick, make a video for you guys. Yesterday was not my day. Uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Yes, there are some results that went my way, but it was overall nah, not exactly how I ideally imagined it. It's kind of also reflecting the shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, this is my Benfica 8990 home jersey. It's the oldest, not the one that I have now, but it's the oldest jersey that I have. I reveal another reason why I'm wearing this during the video, but um, I've never worn it so far, so it was time to wear it. Uh, at least they have one. I'm gonna run through it group by group. Um, and first off, it was in Group E. Uh, Salzburg at home to Liverpool needed a win to in order to have any chance of advancing in the parallel game. Napoli at least needed a point to secure quality qualification. Uh, a win uh, would also have uh, worked, but. Uh, from the way the group was going, a point absolutely secured Napoli. And um, I watched the conference at first, but the Napoli game quickly went out of hand with Milik scoring a hat-trick. First one a blunder from the goalie, second one nicely played, third one a penalty. Um, and then in the second half late, uh, Mertens also scores a penalty. And Napoli runs away 4-0 winners, and I probably would have won Napoli if they hadn't uh, sacked Angelotti right after that. I mean, 4 0 win and you sack uh, the coach. I know there was a lot of things going wrong, but maybe Angelotti is even happy that it happened this way. I still, uh, to this day, I don't get it. Uh, why uh, De Laurentiis is going wacko now? The rumor is that he will be replaced by Gattuso probably by the time this video posts. Uh, Gattuso is already appointed. So it was all. Salzburg Liverpool, which was a pretty nice match with um, chances left and right. Um, especially Mo Salah had many chances that he usually takes, but also Salzburg had quite some where uh, they played too complicated. Instead of going a little bit more direct tour towards the goal, they could have. Um, they often played an additional pass, and it, it, it just doesn't work. Now, Yes, I'm from Austria, however, as a Lask fan, uh, cheering for Salzburg, even in Europe, is hard. But um, I think I would have been happy if they win it, but I'm not devastated at all. I think uh, it's not that bad that Liverpool advanced from that group. And um, yeah, Liverpool, Salzburg... <laughs> Liverpool, Salzburg. Now, uh, early in the first second half, I think there was some chances that especially Holland could have, could have made, but never got there. And then Liverpool kills off the game um, in very short uh, time, within two two minutes. First, the uh, former Salzburg players, Mane and Keita, uh, combined to make it one nil. And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> Salah gets the ball. The ball is played to him in a very acute angle. I mean, it's basically on a touchline. He puts it in and uh, makes it 2-0 in the 59th, so within them, within two minutes it was done. From that moment on it was actually, you know, Salzburg needed to come, but if you go then, if you commit too much, you... they can be ruthless, those Liverpool Poodlians. So yeah, the group ends with Liverpool winning it, one point ahead of Napoli, Napoli going through it without having uh, any losses but uh, three draws, they probably threw away the group win, win their first uh, uh, game against Genk. But other than that, I think Napoli, they won the head-to-head -head against Liverpool and the head-to-head -head against Salzburg. Um, they just are imploding on every other level. Um, let's go to Group F. That was probably the biggest drama of the evening. Um, Inter playing at home to Barcelona. Uh, I was actually surprised that Barcelona only took their regular yellow jerseys, not the one with the Catalan flag. Uh, Barcelona leaving Messi and a few others at home, playing with a better reserve squad. And you would say, oh, this is just made for Inter to uh, 
to advance Inter needed the win to be absolutely sure or they needed to at least match the result that Dortmund had uh, and Dortmund played at home to Slavia Prague um, it's best to talk about these games uh, kind of in parallel as it developed I mean the game in Milan started out with Inter having chances but not being able to connect in the other game uh, Dortmund took a very early lead through Jaden Sancho um, in the 10th minute and you know kind of put a little bit the screws on Inter uh, to make it uh, interesting uh, game there was open but uh, Dortmund had definitely the better start and was uh, the better at first uh, with that lead well, everything seemed to go well for Inter however suddenly Barcelona gets in front of goal and Paris in the 23rd makes it 1-0 for Barcelona this was the first big uh, blow for uh, Inter's hopes I have, to, I have to say because you didn't expect that Barcelona it was the first draw shot and goal when Lukaku and Martinez already had many many more uh, chances so yeah it's 1-0 for Barcelona but um, on the other game Slavia is really putting the pressure on Dortmund I mean Dortmund is barely hanging on Slavia has chances and it was down to Bürki who pulled on some miracle saves to keep Dortmund in the game and then it happened very 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 quickly in the 43rd Suchek equalizes fully deserved for Slavia Prague at that point Dortmund was not on the field it was all Slavia and Slavia away from home plays actually quite well so Slavia uh, gets the equalizer and a minute later Lukaku takes a shot that gets deflected by MTT and it's 1-1 uh, there as well and at that point Inter is in uh, is advancing and that's where it stands at the half second half uh, in Dortmund it doesn't really change and uh, the funny thing is that it came from a kind of a relief attack that was admittedly very nicely played uh, of Dortmund that just they needed to roll off the pressure from Slavia that Sancho gives a nice assist to Brandt who puts it into the net and makes it 2-1 for um, uh, Dortmund again pushing the screws Inter on the other side I mean Lukaku he once rounded the goalkeeper had a touch too heavy he once got past the defender touch too heavy he made the goal but he had so many chances Martinez similarly uh, really nice sequences where uh, I think Martinez with the back to the goal he flips it over himself take takes a shot uh, Inter created chances but could not convert and was in versus then um, I mean the Barcelona substitutions were kind of really uh, odd uh, in the sense that um, who comes on <laughs> the young and Suarez uh, who goes off Rakitic uh, and Griezmann I mean that and then also Ansu Fati comes on for Paris and almost immediately after coming on he makes it 2-1 for Barcelona and that's how it ends uh, a player for Dortmund is sent off for a second yellow and Dortmund hangs on to, to the win and Dortmund advances from a group uh, I have to say if I take out of the similar to, I was I would have been normally happy for Dortmund to advance over Inter but I have to say I want the Serie A to get a little bit more air recognition and Inter going out in that spectacular dummy fashion again last season they cannot manage a win against PSV uh, when that would have been this season uh, Barca B you have to beat Barca B you have all, all chances but I think you lost it more or less when you lost to Dortmund after being 2-0 up at the half um let me say this result in the group left me kind of um level-headed uh as well but um yeah i would not have minded inter going on because then we would have at least three italians for sure moving on to the next stage so i think it will be only two group um g that's where Pefica was playing there was actually also some drama in there but this time it went into my direction um Let's start at Benfica. Uh, Benfica had no chance of advancing and still wearing them because they played great and uh, although it was nil-nil at the half uh, all Benfica 
it was all Benfica all the way, uh, then it was just hanging back and defending. And given how the game went in the other, uh, uh, in Lyon, where Leipzig got two penalties and to uh, make to get a, a comfy 2 nil lead, um, I will, and I was really annoyed by that because that would mean that Zenit, by showing nothing, is moving on. Uh, fortunately, Benfica took care of business in, in the second half and made their goals. And um, they knew that with that they have at least uh, Europa League um, uh, assured. Uh, Cervi in the 447th after a nice assist by Pizzi makes it 1-0, uh, then a penalty that Pizzi... Uh, converts makes it two million as moon with uh, a pretty cool looking on goal. I mean, if this was in in the other goal, that would have been a goal of the season. Makes it three nil for Benfica, and it was never in doubt. The other game, as I said, Leipzig held a two nil lead, and at that point, it was Lyon. If they lose, they are out. If they win, they're in the Champions League, advancing. There's no Europa League. It was oscillating between those two alternatives, which is kind of really odd. Um, Leipzig had the better of the first half, but very early in the second, uh, Awar makes it 1-2 for Lyon, and then it's really game on. I mean, they had, they hit the woodwork uh, and had chances, and but Leipzig, you know, they didn't play full out, I would say, but uh, they could keep them at bay. Uh, Leipzig showed that they are a really good team. Um, but the chances came, and in the end, uh, it is Depay who gets in the 82nd an equalizer. That is enough for Lyon to go through in that group. Uh, I was quite happy. This day. At that point, it was the result that made me the happiest uh, that uh, uh, Lyon ahead of Zenit, and there's nothing against Zenit. I just was so discouraged the way Zenit was playing, and that's why I'm wearing Benfica, because Benfica really took care of business there. Uh, that... Zenit with a no-show is actually eliminated because you cannot just hold back and defend and then uh, stumble your way into the knockout stages. I'm I am really I'm, I'm really sorry. Lyon totally deserved to move on there, and then it leaves the last group, Group H. Uh, I knew it was Ajax against Valencia. And I was so annoyed that in the conference they. Put so many yes, German TV. They put so much uh, emphasis on Leipzig and Dortmund and Milan. Uh, even then, I think they they went even more tomorrow, more to Benfica game or Chelsea than to Valencia Ajax, which was the one real game where there was something to play for. This was a head to head uh, between. I mean, at least from my point of view, I, th I thought Ajax is uh, one of the most attractive sides to watch, and Valencia is also an interesting team. Well, it was clear if Chelsea wins at home, then um, Valencia needs to win, and Ajax needs to have at least a draw to advance. So this was really had to have a final between those two. Uh, and Chelsea did win. I mean, they took care of Lille rather quickly, uh, getting uh, Tammy Abraham in the 19th, making 1 0. Then Aspiliqueta in the 35th, only when Remy put one in, in back at the 78th. I had a slim, 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 slim hope that maybe something might be happening. But um, as I said, I was for Ajax and Valencia to advance, but uh, I, I knew it's near impossible. Nothing against Chelsea. Chelsea used to be my favorite team, team in England, then Abramovich came. I mean, there's some stuff to like about Chelsea again. Honestly, I gotta say. Ajax Valencia. Uh, I saw Ajax against William Dway, and this was a similar game. Ajax having lots of possession, being aggressive, going forward, having chances and shots, but nothing on goal. There was a statistic uh, like 15 minutes before the end of the game where Ajax had 16 shots over, I think, seven or something of, of Valencia, but Valencia put uh, five of these on goal and Ajax had nil on goal. Something outrageous like that. Uh, and yeah, sloppy defending allowed Rodrigo Moreno and sloppy defending, I mean the Feldman, he should have been aware of the offside trap. Uh, he runs out of the line and Rodrigo on the other side is not offside. If he would stand, hold the line, Rodrigo is offside, the goal doesn't count. Rodrigo Moreno converts it admittedly very, very, very nicely. Uh, quick thought, I really, those Valencia jerseys, I mean, at least they don't have a sponsor in the Champions League, but I don't like them. I really don't like them. They look awful, especially the orange taping here. Oh, what is here? That's really pattern. Why? 
anyway, um, so he makes it one nil. Ajax does have chances. There was one that was really elegantly clear of the line, but I still think this would not have uh, made made it over the goal line if there there wasn't a clearance. Ajax is better. Hakim Ziyech. I mean, <laughs> this dude is so gifted, but he's so clumsy, and in many ways, I think he wastes more chances than he makes. Uh, he's just too over eager. I sometimes have to have the feeling. Ajax cannot find the breakthrough. They literally cannot find the breakthrough. Uh, Valencia, I think, uh, it's like 10 minutes before, before before the end, almost coughed it up themselves, but in the last second they can save it. They have a player, but probably to say I'm off for a head, but um, yeah, wouldn't have given that one, to be honest. So uh, Valencia kept it tight at the end. They didn't show much. They had just one free freaker, but they really didn't show much going forward. But what they did is, they disrupted the rhythm of Ajax and so they hold on and it is Ajax who I think I could make an argument that Ajax was the best team in this group but they were also the um, most naive one you were leading 4-1 at Chelsea you cannot let Chelsea come back and equalize and get two red cards you uh, yeah I mean the one I give Chelsea the win in Amsterdam but Ajax needs to beat Chelsea and Ajax needs to get the draw against Valencia here. You're just too naive. They were really some freak results in there. Fortunately, Ajax is out. So yeah, that evening did not go all that well for my liking. Let's see how Wednesday went. Well, Wednesday went a bit more to my liking. Oh, yeah, but I'm not really that much better yet, but I'm still gonna do this. The show must go on. I'm gonna go to bed right afterwards again. Um, all the action was actually in Group C yesterday, uh, where I got a little bit from that. I know they have everything, but I got that Dinamo Zigra Zagreb took an early lead through Olmo and looked like they are gonna pull the upset at the other game. It was an even affair where Atalanta tried to move forward. Actually, I like the Atalanta look with the white pants. That didn't look too bad, to, to, to be honest. It's not the traditional look, uh, but the jersey matchup was kind of nice. But, you know, um, clearly Schachter, almost like Donetsk, a little bit, uh, not uh, Zenit yesterday, not as badly as Zenit yesterday, uh, tried to hold on to the draw, which um, once... Uh, City equalized through Gabriel Jesus seemed to be that's enough. Um, and so it ends the first half 1 1 for um, City at Zagreb and 0 0 in the other game. Um, then it quickly turns the game in Zagreb with Gabriel Jesus uh, adding two more in the 50th and the 54th. And it was pretty clear okay, Zagreb is not going to do anything. So um, Atalanta had a big chance. If they would get uh, the win, then they would actually finish second uh, after losing uh, the first uh, three games, I think, and uh, only getting one point out of the first four. So a big turnaround, actually. Um, to finish off the game, I mean, City then a Foden added even a fourth one, so it was 4-1 for City. Atalanta, though, gets the breakthrough um, in the... 66, where um, Papu Gomez is just by hair on side and puts the ball Castani who gets it in uh, 1 0, and that actually really shock, uh, shocked uh, the uh, Schachter players. They tried to get something, but um, no, it was all Atalanta. Pajalic uh, in the 80th from a free kick that was really, uh, yeah. I mean, Malinowski takes the free kick. Pajic maybe touched it, but to, 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 to be honest, the goalkeeper needs to be there to make it 2-0. And then, uh, yeah, they hit the post. Schachter collect themselves, try to go forward. In the end, Gosens, after another horrible slapstick defending, makes it uh, 3-0 for Atalanta. And Atalanta is through. So the group and City 14, Atalanta only 7. Uh, and Schachter, the Dynamo 6 and 5, respectively. Schachter and Zagreb were hurt by the fact that they played against each other only draws. If they would have won each their, their respective games, it would have been a different story. Uh, quickly through to the games because there was really not much action. Um, group A, uh, it was between Galatasaray and Brügge. If Galatasaray wins, 
uh, or at um, a PSG, they would have a chance. No, they had no chance. Five nil for PSG. Uh, the goals by Icardi, Sarabia, Neymar, Mbappe, and Cavani are penalties. So all the big guys are. Um, scoring and in the other game Brugge was a little bit more into the game uh, against Real Madrid they actually took a, a, the lead which was uh, chalked off but Rodrigo in the 53rd uh, makes it 1-0 then Van Aken, uh, equalizes Vinicius Junior and Modric uh, get the win for Real Madrid so we already knew ahead of the that it was will PSG will be winning the group. Real Madrid is second, uh, Bruges uh, is third, and Gala is out. Uh, in Group B, um, there was one more exciting one between uh, Piraeus and uh, Cervena Svesta. However, Cervena Svesta didn't show up, and once they got a big chance, they got a penalty, they put it against the bar. Uh, it was one way, and in the end, penalty is given for uh, Piraeus and Al Arabi in the 87th converts and Olympiacos moves on into the Europa League. In the other game Bayern against Spurs, easy 3-1 win for Bayern, Spurs playing with second string squad. But also has to be said there was a big uh, injury to Coman by himself, he just got caught in a very weird looking. Uh, but yeah, let's see how long he's out. Bayern finishes a perfect group stage and I think it's the best record of any uh, team so far, however, given the group, it's I don't want to say it's the best group stage of anyone has ever played, but you know, six out of six, and the goal differential, uh, absolutely crazy. And Bayern could have really made this uh, more emphatic. I mean, they three times hit, three times hit the wall. And then Group uh, D was the last one, where uh, yeah. Leverkusen had a chance, beat Juventus, and uh, Atletico shouldn't win. I'm bearing Atletico. Atletico won relatively easy, 2-0. Um, Joao Felic with a penalty, they missed, Trippier missed actually a penalty, uh, I think in the second minute. And I thought, I mean, I saw at the beginning of that game, uh, and I thought to myself, why is the Englishman? English don't have anything with penalties. No. Yeah, it was a good save against the bar, but Joao Felice makes it then 1-0 and Philippe in the 54th makes it 2-0. Uh, done and dusted, there was not much coming from Locke. And Leverkusen against Juve was a lively game um, going back and forth. But as soon as it crept in, that uh, the miracle is not going to happen. Cristiano Ronaldo and he going make the two goals. And so what do we have? We have for the first time that all the qualified teams are from the top five leagues, and it's relatively even. We have four teams from Spain, four teams from England, three from Germany and Italy each, and two from France. Um, and even the order, the two, two German teams are group winners, only one Italian team is group winners. It was down to Inter to give the Italians a little, a little bit better. Um, position but nope they messed it up big time and they're probably the one team except for Ajax that's missing it's also a little bit sad that none of the that's only the top five leagues that they go in there but with that um, we have the draw lineup and what I did I, I actually briefly simulated the draw and so uh, see what are the options and that's the last thing I want to show to you that we will see that uh, let's go by the top seats PSG uh, has the highest chance of playing either against Spurs or Atletico. Dortmund is also uh, obvious, so they're more likely to play against those. Bayern uh, most likely to play against Atletico or Chelsea even. Real Madrid is also an option. Man City, oh, this is uh, very interesting. Atletico Madrid as well, but also Real and Dortmund. So you see uh, Lyon is not so likely for them. For Juve, the most likely seems to be also Chelsea, but you know, they could also play against um, Real Spurs. That doesn't seem too uh, unlikely. Uh, the defending champions, Liverpool, relatively even between Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid and Dortmund. None of these are easy tasks. I would say Barcelona, most likely either Spurs or Chelsea. Leipzig, uh, relatively even among all the options. I mean, in my simulations, Athletic Madrid comes out top, but you know, uh, they're less likely to play against Atalanta. All the others are relatively equally likely. And then Valencia, uh, also um, Spurs, Dortmund uh, are more likely Atalanta, and then uh, Napoli, and least likely Lyon. And you can go the other way as well. So, this is just to give you an idea. 
who is going to play whom might be quite interesting. Well, I'm going to go to bed now, try to get healthy again. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.